What's going on everyone? High Peak Education coming at you again with another example problem. And this time it's polarization. So let's look at this problem. Two polarizing sheets are placed together with their transmission axes crossed so that no light is transmitted. A third sheet is inserted between them with its axis at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the other two polarizer axes. Find the fraction of incident unpolarized light intensity transmitted by the three sheet combination. Okay, I think in order to understand this, we really should draw a picture. So let's consider, here's our first polarizer, and then here's our last polarizer over here, and in between those two polarizers, a third one is inserted. So let's imagine that there's unpolarized light over here. So this unpolarized light coming in here has a electric field that's in the vertical direction. It also has an electric field that's in the horizontal direction, like so. And it also has electric field components that have both vertical and horizontal components. So like this, and like this, something like that. So hopefully you get the idea. So this is electric field, and this is unpolarized. So unpolarized is sort of random in the total polarization directions. Now after moving through the first filter, that is through the first polarizer, Let's imagine that the polarizer axis is completely vertical. I think the only electric field component that emerges should be vertical. Like so. And you can imagine that with this electric field being polarized, if we call this initial intensity, intensity I subscript I, little i, in other words, i initial, then I think that what emerges out here is i subscript i times 0 0.5, in other words, 50%. So that's exactly what we see here. Now the idea is that the second filter, before the middle one was inserted, the second filter, it says no light was able to get transmitted. So this final filter over here should have its polarization axis being exactly horizontal. So it should be like so. And that's because if it was only the first and the second filter, there'd be no light passing through. It'd be all absorbed. But we're told that we place a third filter in between, which is canted at an angle of 45 degrees to both of the other polarizers. So it's, you know, something like this. Now even though here I've usually just been drawing a single line, you can imagine there's many, many lines in terms of these polarizing filters for the, uh, with regard to these polymers. Let's assume, by the way, these are ideal polarizers. So to go from this region to this region, I think we have to use Mollus's law. So if it's 0 0.5, sorry, so that's 0 0.5 times I sub I, then I think we should have, let's see, what emerges here is a smaller component, because think about this. There's a vertical component only, but only the part of this polarization that's in along this axis emerges through here. So it's pretty small, so it's something like this, but it's in the direction of these polarizers. And then what emerges out this last one is only the horizontal component, and that should be quite small. Now, again, we have to use Mollus's law from here to here, so we should have 0 0.5 I initial times cosine squared of theta. Now, what is theta? I think theta is this angle with respect to vertical. That is, if this is vertical, then this right here is theta because vertical is the direction of this polarizer. 
And what is theta for this last bit, where we have to use Mollus's law again, well, you can imagine if this is 45 degrees, so if 45 degrees is something like this, then, then really, this being parallel to this polarizer, this is also the angle theta. And again, using Mollus's law again, we should multiply this previous by cosine squared of theta once again, because we're reducing by that cosine squared theta factor. So this is 0 0.5 times that initial intensity, which came in unpolarized, times cosine squared theta times cosine squared theta. Now, by the way, theta in each of these cases, it turns out I think is the same because I think it's 45 degrees. So when we work all this out, I think what emerges out here should be 0 0.5 I, sorry, that's I, double backed I, initial cosine to the fourth theta. Now, if theta is 45 degrees, that's a very special value because we have uh, knowledge of our unit circle and we know that just up here the cosine of 45 degrees should be square root of 2 over 2 which is the same thing if it's not rationalized as 1 over the square root of 2. Now 1 over the square root of 2 to the fourth should be the same thing as squared and then squared again that's what it means to be to the fourth. Because again, this is cosine of 45 degrees, which is one over square root of two. So you square that, I think you get a half. But if you square that again, you get a fourth. So this should be 0 0.5, which is a half, I initial, it's hard to do a double backed I, I initial, this is an initial, and then that times uh, one fourth. So what do we get? We get this double backed I, this initial intensity divided by eight. So it's one eighth. Now, if you wanted that as a decimal, you'd have 0 0.125 I initial. And again, again, that's like 12.5% of the unpolarized intensity. So notice we lose half here and then we lose another cosine squared, which is another half, so that's 0.25, and then we lose another half, so that's 0.125, or 1 eighth. So I hope that makes sense. So this is how polarizing filters work. And even if you put them in a series, you have to think about Mollus's law each time that you're, again, um, having a change in the polarization axis. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope that was helpful. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed this content. Please subscribe to the channel to grow the channel. Please share this amongst your social networks. Thank you for watching High Peak Education. I will see you in the next video.